having nuclear weapon will become a stigma that for example it happens uh, for example in india mein if you have bhang in your pocket it is like oh ho bhole ka parsa a very good morning to everyone welcome to plutus is myself vikas gupta a faculty of polity economy psi here so we today we will discuss the weekly current event starting with the first news of significance high significance that is israel palestine conflict so in this we have to know few things let's start with that israel palestine conflict this is has been in news so first we have to understand a bit of background and understand whenever there is a news with respect to ir international relations so you need to know a bit of historical journey plus most important thing you need to know is india's dimension how india view that event that's very 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 important keeping that in mind let's start so we know recently the there is hamas hamas which is a palestinian liberation organization depending upon which country you live you will call them terrorist militant patriot freedom fighters depending upon where you live so hamas has launched terror has launched attack on israel basically around 5000 missiles were launched in a counter to that israel has launched a counter affairs and now they are in a scenario of more or less war that is happening okay that told 4000 it is the old data now it is believed that this war has led to around 1600 on the side of hamas and around 1400 on the side of israel so look at the human cost is pay always remember one thing wars are nothing more than big people sitting in big chambers concocting death for the common people that is war or you can pick the entire history war happens between countries but this is the common people who always suffer so to 15 and 1400 around israelis and 1500 around the people of palestine both are suffering for this madless adventure let's understand why this madless adventure so some early phase we have to understand by the 19th century palestine was the home of diverse population consisting 86% muslims 10% around christians and 4% around jews so you can say jew were the minorities that is insignificantly small minorities <clears throat> now let's understand what happened we know by the late late 1800 european group known as zionist at this point understand there were two movement there was something called anti semitism and there is something called zionist movement these are the two things what is this anti semitism anti semitism basically means hatred of the jew and understand why hatred of the jew because it is believed in christianity that jesus was crucified by the jews because jesus was a jew born who founded christianity then same way mohammed Well, who is also linked to the abrahamic religion sect judaism or jews christians christianity muslims islam these three religion are basically brother and sister religion for a layman's language they all have same origin and these t three religion put together are known as abrahamic religions keep that in mind so they share a lot of common ancestry you have to understand this so jesus was born and he that person basically founded christianity and it is believed that during roman empire jesus was crucified but the crucifixion was blamed on jew which was wrong factually jesus was crucified by the roman emperors by the roman empire it was not crucified by the jews but nonetheless jews were blamed for it and because of this christianity and judaism has been fighting for a long time christianity and islam has been fighting for a long time it's a very common war between these three religion that has been taking place since centuries keep that in mind as a background understanding so what happened is by you can say 18th century and particularly in the beginning of the 19th century <coughs> there was aggressive propaganda there was aggressive hatred for the jew which was continuing by first world war when the birth of nationalism took place i hope you remember we discussed the word state state originates the modern definition we know that is territory having a population ruled by a sovereign 
that is the TT of Westphalia. 1648. So by 17th century, modern states as we know them today got birth. So modern nationalism, territory-based nationalism got birth. By 18th century, this 17th century idea became common sense. This fixed territory wala state, it became common sense. And so around the uh, Europe, there was clamor for national nationhood. And in that scenario, the Jews were considered homeless. So nationhood came into being and Jews were considered homeless. So understand this, Jews were the victim of nationalism. And this is the problem with nationalism. I always say nationalism is a good idea. Love for your country is common. We all have it. But when your love for country becomes hatred for some community, then it's dangerous. That's what happened in Europe. So understand this, Jews were crucified, killed, tortured, genocided in the entire Europe. As as they were killed only by Hitler. They were killed in the entire Europe. Hitler took it to another extreme, very extreme. So it was Christians primarily, Jew, uh, Judaism and Islam also has a fight. But Middle East, they were not killed at that scale and they, they were not treated equal. But nonetheless, they were not as bad as they were bad in Christian world. So Christians are responsible for killing millions of Jews in entire Europe. And who were penalized? Muslims. So at this point of time, you have to keep your religious sentiment aside and view event as they are. Then you put it in the religion, whatever your religious orientation, you apply that later. So Jews were crucified in the entire Europe, killed and Hitler took it to another extreme. We have by 1970s, it is written here, by 1917, you got something called Balfour Declaration. He was Secretary of State in British government basically. So British government, mein he announced, he made an announcement which we call Balfour Declaration 1970, which says, that national home for Jew people. Balfour said, we need to provide a home for Jew. So initially, there was exploration where this land could be, as we have written here. I told you, the rise of Adolf Hitler and power coming to Germany, he killed a large number of Jews. And of course, they were shifted to Palestine. But understand this, initially, Palestine was not the chosen place. Initially, there was exploration. Can we settle these Jew people in Americas, in some place in Europe? And then you know, as we all are, we want justice for the people, but not at our cost. Just for example, when you're going through a car, you see some uh, uh, beggar or something, you feel bad. You want to help them, but it does not mean you will take them at home. You want to help them, but without taking them home. Same happened with kitchens. Kitchens were controlling the Middle East. After First World War, it was divided into something we call mandate. Uh, it must be written here somewhere. It is known as mandate. The British mandate and the French mandate. Palestine fall under British mandate. It was under control of Britain basically. A British people thought that we have to settle these Jew people because they do not have a homeland. And the rise of aggressive nationalism in the entire Europe is leading to the genocide of the Jews. So they thought, let us shift them. And where they found? Palestine. But remember, they initially uh, uh, pondered over the possibility of shifting them to even Americas or Europe. But there was no possibility. So they said, why not Islam? Let's go to Jew. Let's go to Palestine, the ancient so-called homeland of the Jew. At this point, understand, as Gandhi said, I have all the sympathies for what happened to the Jews. But it does not blind me from the justice for Palestine. It is, I'm not saying that uh, what Hamas did on the Israel is correct. I do not support violence at all. I am a Gandhian person. But what I'm saying is imposing Jew in the name of historical understanding on Palestine was wrong. He says, I say, understand this. Mongolia, it's a small sandwich country between USSR, now Russia and China. So in Mongolia, there used to be an emperor, Genghis Khan. In Hindi, we call him Chengiz Khan. So that Genghis Khan person, he, he basically expanded Mongolian empire to the entire Asia. He virtually controlled the entire Asia, except some part, except India. So, can, so based on historical understanding, Mongolia can claim this entire Asia as Greater Mongolia. No. 
दैट इज वट आई एम ट्राइंग टू से हिस्ट्री में तो अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स हैव हैपन हिस्ट्री में तो क्या क्या जस्टिफाई करेंगे हम वी लिव इन मॉडर्न टाइम्स मॉडर्न टाइम्स लिव विद मॉडर्न स्टेट एज आई टोल्ड यू हैविंग अ फिक्सड टेरिटरी तो इफ द पीपल हु आर सपोर्टिंग दिस इजराइल ऑक्यूपेशन ऑफ पलस्तीन दिस शुड ऑल्सो सपोर्ट चाइनाज ऑक्यूपेशन ऑफ साउथ चाइना सी बिकॉज चाइना से इज that once upon a time in century we had control over south china sea and he claims and the south china sea in historical ground china has captured tibet on historical ground once upon a time in century we controlled tibet so as such there is no limit anyone can claim anything for example we we during modern empire we controlled from afghanistan to myanmar so would we con- would we claim myanmar tomorrow understand this there is no limit of historical understanding history mein to na jaane what has happened the new must think that has happened in history if you try to correct history by diluting today then you will have no future please understand this the, now we will come and understand how things happened so please keep that in mind so balfour declaration talking about establishment of israel and we also see india's approach which uh, by the way understand the current government approach is very good it should be but we have to understand why why we have shifted from nehruvian approach to modi's approach both approach were right nehru's approach was also right in 1940s and modi's approach today is also right because circumstances have changed theek okay? hai please we understand that so what happened is in 1947 un mein this was taken this palestine issue was taken and un presented something we called two state solution 1947 united nation intervened in israel palestine conflict and it did not adhere to the principle of self determination of people it's a principle i hope everyone remember in 1917 uh, woodrow wilson fourteen point speech in woodrow wilson fourteen point speech he coined an idea called self determination basically it is a right of all nationalities to de- uh, to decide on their nationhood this was the reason that we supported british movement in world war 1 why indian extremists as we call them lal bal pal represents them so why these people supported britain in first world war because they were believer of this idea they said britishers and the uh, the uh, the capitalist powers woodrow wilson was one of them the uk uh, the us president he in 14 point speech he has promised self determination so there are chances that if we support britain in the world war 1 and they win then british will give us self rule it did not happen they belied this promise of self determination so in during second world war we were said no thank you we will not support you but he said please support us now we will give you self rule after the second world war we said you said the same thing in during first world war ki you support us we will give you self rule and we were like no thank you first give us independence then we will support you because there is a saying in english fool me once shame on you fool me twice shame on me in indian it was like you have fooled us once in world war 1 we will not be fooled again give us independence we will support you keep that in mind the principle of self determination so un did not adhere to this principle un recommended of course we know un is basically a us brain child so it was highly under zionist influence because 1940s mein there was a lot of sympathy for the jew cause because of course yeah these people were butchered basically mercilessly they were butchered particularly by hitler <coughs> and understand i am again emphasizing this jews were the victim of nationalism aggressive religious nationalism aggressive christian religious nationalism so understand this please remember that so zionist movement influence by un recommended 55% of palestine area for the jew state jabki despite their population was only 30% in 1947 the jews were 30% in the entire area still un recommended 55% of the area of palestine as a jew state and the remaining one and the remaining one 45% will go to the palestine this is known as two state solution at that point of time palestinian organization particularly the plo palestinian liberation organization yasir arafat
did not agree to this plan and uh, most of the islamic world rejected this plan but even if you agree on this plan then out of entire palestinian area 55% should be israel 55% should be israel not the entire one then why is the drama the drama happened because you know there is no limit to greed i think fine you made israel it's okay but israel is becoming greedy it is expanding itself it has been capturing palestinian area and there is a prediction by 2030 or by latest by 2040 there will be not even a single inch of land under palestinian control it will entirely be israel this is the problem understand it like this you have a four floor building theek hai somebody suffered a lot so you were very kind hearted person you were like okay fine you can come and live in my building i have four floors you can have one floor that person forcefully captured the second floor you were angry yaar i i gave you this is my land you came here you settled i even tolerating you you got two lands then you went to united nations maan lete hain you went to some neutral arbitrator that person said okay fine two floors will be with that person who captured and two floor will be yours you even contended with that not everyone but you resisted but you were like okay kya kar sakte hain but now that person is controlling your third floor and now reaching for the fourth floor basically from your own house you are out so what you will do you will become thirsty with revenge this is the th- understand what hamas is has done to israel is condemnable unequivocally killing innocent for any reason i do not support wars for any reason war is nothing but rich uh, powerful people sitting in big chambers deciding for how common man should die that is nothing more than war this is war only i never support war but nonetheless this is unjust you have got a land whatever land you had be contented with it 55% kafi tha khush reh lete usme aur as far as christian world america is supporting israel everyone is supporting israel india ko i am not uh, discussing india ko i will discuss later india has a very peculiar circumstances america is supporting britain is supporting itna hi takleef hai to aap de do america has such a big land and such a narrow population america has so much of land you have florida state which is a bulging out state something de do wo palestine ko israel ko and let them settle there aap pe itna bada ilaka pada hai waise bhi aapka khud ka nahi hai we all know how america was settled america is not its own these were the british people who went to americas butchered killed the native americans and settled themselves there so the current population of america is not american these not these are not the people who were american they were red indians they call you killed somebody you butchered everyone there and you captured that land you and you call call yourself that uh, the natives of that land that's not how it works if historical ground is justification then americans all white people must be thrown out of america that's not your land that was red indians land give that land to them this is hypocrisy na yaar always remember i am hamesha kehta hu where you stand decides what is your criteria for example if you are palestinian you will of course support hamas if you are a israeli you will support israel we are bound by the nationalities we are bound by where we born and that always decide what is our loyalty for example like let's take india china issue if you are born in china of course you will support chinese government if you are born in india you will support indian government for same event i am saying one event took place you are chinese you are born in china you will support chinese government for same event if you are born in india you will support indian government so your nationality where you take birth decides same event can become just can become unjust depending upon which side you stand on so understand i am trying to make you understand the real picture taking sides is up to you please remember this i hope it's clear after that we know 1947 1949 war took place why because 1947 un resolution plus plan was not accepted by a lot of people ultimately there was a war and in that war israel occupied 78% of palestinian area look at the change during 1947 when this resolution came israel was cap- had only 7% of the land from 7% israel captured 78% of palestinian and in this there was a mass exodus mass sorry max ni mass mass exodus of palestinian from this area this is what we called 
Nakba, the great catastrophe. In Arab language, it is called Nakba, the great catastrophe. Because this war, of course, common people do not want war. They just want to live with peace. Kya chata hai wo vikti? This is what uh, there is a scholar in political science, McCavely, has said that if a prince who is trying to become a king, a prince, if a prince has to take sides, the prince should always take the sides of the common people. Then McCavely was asked why. McCavely replied that because the the elite class, the court imams, the military officials, they all crave power. Common man never craves power. Those people crave only a decent living, a sufficient living, some security for their female members, some uh, woman empowerment, some job with good salary. Bus. They're more than happy with than this. This big power game, changing takht, changing the king, changing government, playing politics, playing with the life of people in the name of war. These are all big, big people sitting in big chambers. They do this. They are insensitized. Insensitized hypocrites. Nothing more than that. Keep that in mind. So, from seven percent, seventy-eight percent, large number of Palestinian leave that land. This is known as Nakba and the Marx Exodus. Since then, bringing these people back to Palestine is one of the dispute between Israel and Palestine. Two dispute clear. One dispute is with respect to land. Second dispute is with respect to the people who went out of Palestine. Remember that. Now the six-day war took place. Uh, so it was an Israeli force launched attack on Egypt and all. In this, they even occupied the remaining 22 percent. So by the six-day war, Israel had 100 percent of Palestinian area, 100 percent, including the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. Later on, they gave it back in the name of recognition. They even occupied some area from Egypt, particularly Sinai Peninsula, but they gave it back. They occupied some part of the Egypt, which they gave back under Camp David Accord. Very significant event of 1979, along with Iranian Revolution. Very significant event. Okay, please remember this. Up now comes Oslo peace process. What it was this? It was a breakthrough agreement reached between Israelis and Palestinian in Oslo, Norway. What was this? In this, basically, the PLO. Remember, I talked about this earlier. Palestinian Liberation Organization, the chief at that point of time, well before this, was Yasser Arafat. This person accepted the two-state solution. Just like I told you, na, you brought someone at home. That person first captured your first floor, sorry, ground floor, then the first floor. Now you have two floors. That person has two floors. You are like, yeah, fine. Please do not capture the third floor. You have some area. Please live. Let me live. So they was like, yeah, I am anyway unable to get the remaining area back from Israel. Because it's really supported by world superpower like America. I can't do anything. I'm not even supported by my fellow compatriots, these so-called Middle Eastern countries. In ke baare mein bhi I will talk about how hypocrisy runs in the Muslim countries as well. We will understand that also. Now Hamas, because of the failure of Palestinian, basically known as Palestinian Intifada uprising. So you have to remember these terms: Nakba, the Great Catastrophe, Intifada. Uprising, the Palestinian uprising, anti-Semitism, hatred of the Jew, Zionist movement, a movement to create the homeland for the Jews. So, because of the failure of Palestinian intifada, intifada against the Israeli occupation in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, okay, there was an internal evolution of Palestinian Muslim Brotherhood. Palestinian Muslim Brotherhood, there was an internal evolution. And the largest among all Palestinian militant Islamist organization, one of them was Hamas. So I hope it's clear why Hamas rose. Hamas rose because of the failure of the PLO and other organization who were trying to wrest control from Israel. You can make a parallel here with the India. India may freedom, modern freedom struggle of India. We divide into three phases: moderate, extremist, and revolutionaries. So. Same was the reason of change from moderate to extremist. Extremists like Lal Bal Pal. These were the people who said that the moderates, like Dada Bhai Naroji and all, moderates were appeasing the Britishers through prayer, petition, and protest. They were saying you are appeasing Britishers so much they are not giving anything. Now we have to become violent. That's how it always happened. First, you appease the person who is doing injustice. 
but when that person does not yield control you are like let's have a war all out war the same way in india when moderates were unable to get good concessions from the britishers the extremist came into being and then revolutionary came into being who will start killing british officials ab dekhiye understand this we killed britishers because they were on our land and we were like you have to go back same is what hamas is doing again i am not supporting any uh, violent activity i never support violent activity kisi koi bhi kar raha ho isse mujhe koi matlab nahi koi bhi reason whatever is the reason violence is not a solution i am a staunch believer of gandhism but i am trying to make you understand how this change happened the way indian freedom struggle transformed from moderate to extremist to revolutionary because britishers were not listening to the indians the same thing happened here the hamas evolved because the palestinian intifada was failing to gain back the control of west bank and gaza strip i hope it's clear why they rose into power and now they control around 2 million palestinian in the gaza strip the organization is known for its armed resistance against the israel ठीक है विच लेड टू द डेजिग्नेशन सम कंट्रीज कॉल इट अ टेररिस्ट ग्रुप इज रियल यूनाइटेड स्टेट यूरोपियन यूनियन एंड यू के इंक्लूडिंग अदर कंट्रीज टेररिज्म आई हैव टोल्ड यू अर्लियर ऑल्सो टेररिज्म डिपेंड्स अपॉन वेयर यू स्टैंड डिपेंडिंग अपॉन वेयर यू स्टैंड द सेम पर्सन कैन अपियर लाइक अ टेररिस्ट एंड द सेम पर्सन कैन अपियर लाइक अ फ्रीडम फाइटर वी हैव टेकन न्यूमरस एग्जाम्पल वन एग्जाम्पल आई ऑलवेज टेक ऑफ भगत सिंह Bhagat Singh threw a bomb in Central Legislative Assembly, which you can compare to today's Parliament. His purpose was not to kill anyone. His purpose was only to make the deaf government hear. He threw that bomb for us. He is our patriot. He threw that bomb against British government. For them, he was a terrorist, and that's why he was given that penalty. Now understand this in today. For example, Modi government brings a bill against Gupta community. ठीक है, आई एम फ्रॉम गुप्ता कम्युनिटी आई हेट दैट बिल सो बिकॉज आई हेट दैट बिल डू आई हैव द राइट टू थ्रू अ बॉम्ब इन सेंट्रल लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली आई विल डू एग्जैक्टली लाइक भगत सिंह आई विल नॉट हर्ट एनी वन आई विल जस्ट मेक द गवर्नमेंट हियर दैट माई कम्युनिटी इज नॉट लाइकिंग दिस सो वट विल हैपन फॉर द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया आई विल बिकम अ टेररिस्ट बट फॉर माई गुप्ता कम्युनिटी आई विल बिकम अ पेट्रियॉट बिकॉज आई डिड दिस फॉर दैम नॉट फॉर एवरी वन फॉर सम पीपल एटलीस्ट understand as if i always say depending upon where you stand the same person the same event the same scenario can appear like a freedom struggle or can appear like a insurgency can appear like a terrorist can appear like freedom fighter same person same event same scenario so whatever judgment you will give on hamas so they are they are having this twisted reality we know this a reason for creation i told you now let us come to i have explained you palestine and israel conflict in detail including the historical reasons palestine were killed by in the entire europe particularly by the christians and among them particularly by hitler and because britain controlled the palestine so britain found that it's a good mechanism let shift all the jew into palestine 1947 mein UN gave a resolution giving 55% of the land to the Israel remaining to the Palestine now over time Israel is occupying that it is expanding itself slowly slowly Israel is establishing settlements around Palestine area and there are chances that by 2040 there will be no Palestine the entire area will be Israel so you are you are eating a state day by day that's why Gandhi said this i am not saying this that's why Gandhi said this that i told you earlier also that i have all the sympathies for the jews but it does not deny it does not blind me from the justice for the palestine remember that but again mai fir bhi kahunga violence is not a solution for anything india's response let's understand india's response and how it has changed over time so during nehru's time nehru was written uh, an article uh, sorry nehru was written a letter by einstein yes albert einstein the scientist one he was a jew so he wrote an article he wrote a letter to the nehru urging nehru to vote in favor of israel in the un resolution plan basically india did not okay why india did not because nehru pointed this to einstein few things pehla the sentiments of muslims in india 
he felt that the Muslim minority in India may have a sentimental attachment to Palestine, and which they do. Not today, because today is a different scenario. I'm talking about 1940s. Why? Because Islam believes in something called Muslim Ummah. Muslim Ummah means Muslim Brotherhood, or you can say Muslim State. Islam does not believe in territorial states. Islam believes in religious state. Ab uh, why is it so? Because understand, Islam born in 7th century. 7th century mein modern state was not a concept. Of course, baat hai, but the modern state got emerged in 17th century. So Islam's birth and modern state idea has 10 centuries in between. How could a, a religion of 7th century can have an idea of 17th century? Let's take an example. If today, for example, if today I found a new religion, so would I mention mobile phone, internet, social media in that religion? Of course I will. I will find a new religion, for example, Guptaism. <laughs> in that Guptaism, would I include, of course I will include tenants about social media, I will mention internet, because it has been founded today. So all religions, depending upon where, when they were founded, they were based on the values of that time. Because we all understand values changes over time. With the change of value, society's practices change. At one point of time, Sati was a common sense in India. R.M. Roy, Raja Ram Mon Roy fought against Sati. Understand this, his own family protested against Ram R.M. Roy for fighting against Sati. But he was like, no, I have to. Same, take a recent example. Supreme Court has said prostitution is a profession. Supreme Court has said LGBT have the right to live, basically. A new link 377. So before this, LGBTs were doing something criminal. After this, they are not doing anything criminal. So because value change, this same Supreme Court took 75 years to say this. Why 75 years? Uh, since independence, you can say 75, 76 or since 1950, you can say 73 years. Why? Because morality changes. Judges are not born from heaven. Because judges would be sitting in such classes preparing for judicial exam or preparing for law exam. These judges. So the current judges, they are embedded in modern morality. The old judges were embedded in old morality. So they gave judgment according to old morals. These judges are giving judgment according to present morals. So understand society changes over time. So still at that point of time, Muslims believed in Muslim in Ummah. And there was a high sentiment running for them. They were not believers of territorial states. I hope it's clear. First point. Second was India's energy dependence on Middle East. I believe it is a genuine point. Very genuine. What's a genuine point? Because even today, 85% of India's energy needs are met by import. Even today I'm talking about. 85% of energy needs we meet by imports. So we are critically dependent on the Middle East. And you can understand this, that a BJP spokesperson, I'm forgetting her name, uh, whatever her name was, she said something about Muhammad, which was a factual statement by the way, but she said this, it went viral in the Middle East. Modi government had to react. They expelled her from the BJP and FIRs were filed. Modi government has never done this to any hate mongerer, which is, you know, India's media. And you can open any channel, there is 24-7 hate. So on those channels, they never took action. This case, Nupur Sharma, yes. They took action on Nupur Sharma. Why? Because Modi government understand we are energy dependent on Middle East. If because of this small statement by one person, if Middle Eastern countries react by, for example, increasing petrol, diesel prices, crude oil prices, we will be hurt. So for one person, we cannot make entire India suffer. That's why the Modi government took action against her. Out of compulsion, not out of will. They did not want to take the action. They were forced because understand dependence. So understand at this point of time, a lot of things we do in life, not because we want to do them, but because the circumstances are such, we, are, we cannot do anything. So one was Muslim sentiment in India. Second was India's energy dependence in Middle East. Third, India wanted to counter Pakistan's influence in Middle East. We did not want Pakistan to take the ground in Middle East, which we 
cannot allow it to have for the legacy of Gandhian vision. I told you Gandhian vision. Gandhi said, my sympathies are all with the Jews. They have been untouchables of Christianity. Very good political statement. Because Britishers, Christians, Britishers used to make fun of Indians that you have untouchability. So this line is very, very smart line. Gandhi said, we have untouchability, you have untouchability. You are treating Jews like untouchables of Christianity. So we don't tell us untouchability. The religious section has been invoked for justification of inhumane treatment. So Gandhi is saying, I sympathy hai. I have sympathy with the Jew. They have been untouchables of Christianity. They, for them, religion, I told you, religion and nationalism, both have been used throughout the history for killing people. So religion sanction have been invoked for justification of inhumane treatment to them. However, it is wrong and inhumane to impose Jews on others. So because of Gandhian legacy, the Muslim sentiment, the energy dependence in Middle East and Pakistan. We did not want Pakistan to gain influence in the Middle East. India had no option but to uh, reign in favor of Palestine. However, things changed. Let's see how. Modi government, particularly the Prime Minister Modi, in his tweet recently, he has used the word terrorist for Hamas. It was a radical shift. We never use such word for anything related to Palestine. Never. Why Modi is using this word? C. Raja Mohan wrote an article recently. So if Delhi police wants to arrest somebody, they can arrest C. Raja Mohan for writing this article. So C. Raja Mohan basically wrote this article. I think it came on 11th October Indian Express. You can check that out. In that he argued, why could Modi government use the word terrorist? And what has changed? Because some things have changed. Let's understand. First, rise of realism in the Middle East. C. Raja Mohan argues, that Modi government has a flexibility to say this word terrorist because they know there will be no backlash. Nehru in government and government before you can say 2000, before Vajpayee era or till Vajpayee era, till Vajpayee era governments, they were under compulsion because BJP government was also in power during Vajpayee government. But Vajpayee never took side of Israel clearly, even though he was inclined, but never took clear side. Why? Compulsion. Foreign policy compulsions. Modi does not have any compulsion like that. The prime reason, realism in Middle East, because middle, even Middle Eastern country, I told you, not, even Middle Eastern country have hypocrisy. This is the hypocrisy. Even Middle Eastern country does not care about Palestine. The leaders of Middle East, they are least caring about Palestine. Why? Because modern state concept that emerged in West in a particular historical setting is now becoming a common sense. And the Middle Eastern countries, the current leader like a, a Mohammed bin Salman in Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Zayed in UAE, these are modern, today's generation. Maybe their fathers, forefathers, they were embedded in Muslim Ummah. These are new leaders. These are kids or you can say these are the product of modern time, today's time. Remember I told you Supreme Court, the current judges are embedded in today's morality and they are giving judgment accordingly. Same, the current leaders of Middle East, they are embedded in modern morality. They are believers of modern state, fixed territory-based states. And because of this, they do not care about Palestine. This is what Sri Raja Mohan is saying. Realism in the Middle East. And because Modi government is using the word terrorist, they do not worry about this. By using this word, they will angry anyone. They angry anyone in Middle East, except to some extent Iran. We will understand that later, why Iran will be a bit angry. So, realism in Israel, very you know, realism in Middle East, very easily visible from Abraham Accords, uh, under which UAE and Bahrain established full diplomatic ties. This gives flexibility to Modi to not worry about reaction of the Middle Eastern country. Something he worried about in case of Nupur Sharma. In Nupur Sharma scenario, he worried about, the government of India worried about the reaction in Middle East. This case may we are not worried because we know even the Middle Eastern countries do not care about Palestine very much. They are just giving a lip service. Why they are giving a lip service? Because people in Middle East are still connected with Palestinian cause. The common people of Middle East, they are connected with the cause of Palestine. 
बट द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ मिडल ईस्ट दे लीस्ट केयर अबाउट पलस्तीन वो भूल चुके हैं मरो जियो उन्हें फर्क नहीं पड़ता दे जस्ट गिव लिप सर्विस सेकेंड द डोमेस्टिक पॉलिटिक्स ऑफ मेजोरिटेरियनिज्म सेकेंड रीजन मोदी कुड यूज दिस वर्ड टेररिज्म द पॉलिटिक्स ऑफ मेजोरिटेरियनिज्म इन इंडिया इन द इलेक्शन ईयर वीनो इलेक्शन इज ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर इट लेबलिंग मुस्लिम एक्सट्रीमिस्ट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड टेररिस्ट गिव अ क्लियर बूस्ट टू हिंदू नेशनलिज्म सो दे इज अनदर रीजन डोमेस्टिक पॉलिटिकल सिनेरियो बिकॉज द करेंट गवर्नमेंट डज नॉट डिपेंड ऑन मुस्लिम वोट बैंक एनी वे दे अंडरस्टैंड आई हैव टोल्ड यू दे इज अ डिफरेंस बिटवीन कांग्रेस पॉलिटिक्स एंड बीजेपी पॉलिटिक्स बीजेपी रन द पॉलिटिक्स ऑफ रिलीजन दे ट्राई टू यूनिफाई हिंदूज इन अ वोट बैंक कांग्रेस रन द पॉलिटिक्स ऑफ कास्ट दे वॉन्ट टू यूनिफाई माइनॉरिटीज एज अ वोट बैंक एंड दे वॉन्ट टू डिवाइड हिंदूज इन टू कास्ट सिस्टम बिकॉज हिंदूज डिवाइड इन टू कास्ट विल वोट फॉर कांग्रेस आप आप तो नहीं सॉरी बी एस पी एस पी बट इफ दे यूनिफाई एज अ हिंदू वोट बैंक दे विल वोट फॉर बीजेपी सो बाय डूइंग दिस दे आर बेसिकली एंड देन यू नो अवर गोदी मीडिया दे विल यूज दिस एंड से ओ हो मोदी जी हैज सेट दिस एंड दे आर पॉपिंग ऑफ हिंदू नेशनलिज्म which is anyway on very rise in india so this are the reason modi could say the word terrorist i hope it's clear now understand this so now let us come to the question is it good or bad i believe it is very good because understand this there has been realism in middle east if middle eastern countries i think they are 22 islamic countries if they do not worry about palestine why should we worry about palestine hame kahe ko takleef chahiye bhai we are india we are far fetch from palestine i know some injustice has taken place we will give lip service jaise modi government has done after calling hamas terrorist modi tweet the government of india ministry of external affairs has clearly said we are committed to palestine unhone balance bhi kar diya modi used the word terrorist godi media will play this dekhiye modi ji is calling islamic people terrorist and the hindu nationalism will take forever vote will come to modi government but modi government understand some com- complexity particularly with respect to iran iran is a shia majority state in middle east which support hamas and lebanon also hezbollah basically so to assuage any kind of drama the ministry of external affairs issued a communication saying india is committed to two state solution that palestine has the right to exist along with israel this has been our traditional position since antiquity so we have balances understand i hope it's clear so i would say what modi government has the policy of modi government is good right now because realism is in middle east if middle eastern countries do not care about palestine we should not boil our blood unnecessary ha whatever happening there on humanitarian grounds israel killing palestinian palestinian killing hamas killing israeli is condemnable we should condemn both equally but we should not become a party there we are not a party and we should not become a party so in this i would say modi government stand is good however understand why this stand is there i hope it's clear chaliye ab jaldi se uh, let's understand the rationale of current israel and hamas conflict i told you what is the rationale because hamas is supported by iran and iran is concerned about usa and sunni monarchies particularly saudi arabia willingness to recognize israel Up Saudi Arabia has not recognized Israel forever. Uh, what is happening is the recently there were talks that USA is mediating an agreement between Israel and Saudi Arabia. If they sign this agreement, then the chances were that the tri- uh, that uh, triangle of US, Israel, Saudi Arabia will come into play, and Iran hates Saudi Arabia. Iran is a Shia mon- uh, Shia democracy. Uh, Saudi Arabia is a Sunni monarchy. and shia and sunni have a long fight and saudi arabia does not like iran very much iran does not like saudi arabia very much so iran was concerned if this deal is negotiated and signed then iran will be bec- uh, left out in the middle east will become a paraya basically so understand this so called war what is happening right now and timing dekhiye look at the timing so that's why i said in the very beginning war is nothing more than big people sitting in big chambers ठीक है इन देर आर कम्फी कम्फर्ट जोन विद जेट क्लास सिक्योरिटी दीज पीपल आर कंकॉक्टिंग वॉर्स फॉर कॉमन पीपल टू डाई इन द नेम ऑफ जियो पॉलिटिक्स दिस इज एग्जैक्टली वट इट इज इट इज बींग सैड दैट इरान हैज पुस्ड हमाश एंड लेबनन हैजुल्ला बेसिकली टू अटैक इज रियल बिकॉज अब 
because Hamas has attacked Israel and now Saudi Arabia cannot sign the deal because Saudi Arabia is a cradle of Muslim civilization. And if Saudi Arabia signed this deal and I told you the people of Middle East have strong sentiments for Palestine because they believe in Muslim Ummah. But the leaders of Middle East, they do not care about Palestine very much. But they cannot say this out loud. If they say it, it will be drama. Okay? So they cannot say this. So up now, there are high chances Saudi Arabia will not be able to sign this deal. This is what, Isra this is what Iran wants. So they say for geopolitical reason, a drama has been carrying out. For geopolitical reason, thousands of Palestinians, thousands of Israeli are going to die. So this is the world. I told you in Ukraine war also. So we can do this one thing. In this war, so-called war of Hamas and Israel, Jite koi bhi, Jite ga Iran. In this so-called war of either Hamas wins or Israel lose, which will not happen. If Israel win or Hamas lose, which is likely to happen, the real winner will be Iran. Because it can prevent these kind of negotiation between Sunni monarchies, particularly Saudi Arabia with Israel. Same I told you in case of Ukraine war. Ukraine war may whether Ukraine wins against Russia or Russia wins again against Ukraine, the winner is America. These are big geopolitical game carrying out. Fine, let's see. So these are changes I told you. These are Siraj Mohan's changes. The quest for moderate Islam. Uh, there is a clamor in the Middle East to go for moderate Islam basically. We know uh, Pope Francis' visit to Abu Dhabi. Women in Saudi Arabia are learning to drive. Saudi Arabia has lifted a ban on movies also, movie theater also. In Iran, women are protesting against headscarf. This all is happening because modern values have even penetrated into Muslim societies. Which modern values? Western Christian modern values. Because I've told you always, modernity is a gift of Christianity. Please remember that. Next. Pan-Islamism, I told you, there is a death of Pan-Islamism. Pan-Islamism means Muslim Ummah. There is a death of Muslim Ummah. Because even now, even cut, Sunni monarchies are fighting with each other. So basically, the real rivalry that is there is only between Shia, Salah, Sunni. That is this point. You know. The real divide in Middle East is no longer Israel-Arab. The real divide is Shia, Sunni basically. Apart from this realism in the region, I have explained you. There is a rise of realist, modern nationalism in the Middle East and the leaders no longer care about Palestine. Okay, this is what we have. Chale, I hope I have exhaustively explained everything related to Middle East. Fine, let us move to the next news then. The next news we have is the Global Hunger Index 2023. The latest edition of Global Hunger Index report, Global Hunger Index report in India, which recently released by Concern Worldwide and Wildlife Hunger. The, uh, you have to remember who published this report. You basically can ask in prelims. India has got the honorable rank of 111 out of 125 countries. So, what do you say India has a score of 28.7, indicating a serious level of hunger. And India has come worse than Pakistan, 102, Bangladesh, 81, Nepal, 69, Sri Lanka, 60. So, India is way below in this indicator. So, another achievement for Amrit Kal, basically. Now, let's understand all sides. What government is saying against the indicator and what the indicator is saying about India. We have to understand both sides always. Global Hunger Index report, it basically measures and traces hunger in region, country and global levels by using four indicators. What are four indicators? Undernutrition. Undernutrition means share of population with insufficient calorie intake. The population which does not have sufficient calorie intake, that is undernutrition. It has around one third weightage. Next is child stunting. What is child stunting? Child stunting is also known as uh, height for age criteria. That you should have a proper height according to your age. That is stunting criteria. The height for the age criteria, it has one sixth weightage. If you do not have height according to your age, you are considered stunted. Child wasting. 
वेस्टिंग मीन्स वेट फॉर एज क्राइटेरिया वी शुड वी ऑल शुड हैव अ प्रॉपर वेट अकॉर्डिंग टू द एज इफ यू डू नॉट हैव अ वेट अकॉर्डिंग टू योर हाइट क्राइटेरिया सॉरी वी शुड हैव हाइट अकॉर्डिंग टू अवर एज एंड वेट अकॉर्डिंग टू अवर हाइट इफ यू डू नॉट हैव दैट यू आर कॉल्ड वेस्टेड चाइल्ड मोर्टैलिटी बेसिकली द डेथ ऑफ चिल्ड्रन बिलो द एज ऑफ फाइव दिस मेक्स अ वन थर्ड सो वन थर्ड वेटेज फॉर दिस वन थर्ड वेटेज फॉर अंडर न्यूट्रीशन वन सिक्स फॉर चाइल्ड स्टंटिंग वन सिक्स फॉर चाइल्ड वेस्टिंग these are the four parameters used by global hunger index you have to know all these parameter by heart otherwise nahi by heart you have to remember these parameters chaliye fine then let's see what is the status of india we know in under nutrition india stood at 16.6% mortality mein india is at 3.1% anemia in women from 15 to 20 india stood at 50 Eight percent, which is you can say best among all. Uh, what is an anemia in women? Basically, fifty-eight uh, percent is very high. Basically, anemia in women. I told you the problem in Indian women is IVI deficiency, iodine, vitamin, and iron deficiency primarily. Another thing I have told earlier also, as highlighted by Economic Survey as well as World Health Organization report, India may the women in pregnancy do not gain either sufficient weight. or they do not start pregnancy at good weight the recommended weight according to who is around 18.5 kgs around this much should be the gain of weight during pregnancy but average on an average indian woman get 9 kgs so the gain of weight in india is around half of recommended and because of this child stunting child nutrition is very common remember the kind of nutrition a fetus a child about to born get within the mother that is in vitro nutrition the nutrition they get within the uterus decides how they will behave just after birth and the nutrition they will get just after birth decides how they will behave their entire life that's why it is said investing 1 rupee in children health nutrition means saving 100 rupees later in education and hospitals obviously baat hai if a children have good nutrition they will have proper weight proper height they will learn better they will get ill less so they will go to hospital less and they will go to school more so it's a it's a advantage particularly I always remember the 1000 days since birth for uh, nutrition within birth before birth sorry nutrition before birth within the mother is very important after that 1000 days since birth the nutrition that a child get determines their future largely we have to focus on that okay next is child wasting india has the highest child wasting rate in the world 18.7 it is the highest in the world so this is the problem i always say why this is there because indian media does not talk about it why they do not talk about it we know why they do not talk about it it's very simple because i always say a sold out media give birth to a dead citizen and sorry to say we have the same theek okay, hai keep that in mind now let us see what government says about this we have to know all sides government's action on hunger theek <laughs> hai okay, so it's a very, actually it is sarcastically written it is not government action on hunger it is government action on hunger report so rather than fighting for hunger government chose first to fight with the report then we will fight with the hunger let's see Women and Child Development Ministry said that this index suffer from serious methodological issue and shows a malefied intention. You know, foreign propaganda. As Indira Gandhi used to say, that CIA, the American agency, is trying to destabilize her government. अब क्या बोले इस बारे में हम? ठीक है, there are people who always blame other people not to improve. I agree. मैं मानता भी हूँ देखिए, I agree. There may be some biases because I told you. in the previous news i told you where you are born decides what value you will get and those value decide how you will judge the same event event very much decides your birth your upbringing decides a lot so of course there will be a bias in this report but the trends are never wrong we am hamesha kehta hu trends can never be wrong data can be wrong for example government of india says we have 3 trillion तो हो सकता है देर मे बी सम कैलकुलेशन एर मैथोलॉजिकल एर देर न्यूमरस एर इन जी डी पी कैलकुलेशन तो वी मे बी टू पॉइंट एट ट्रिलियन हो सकता है वी मे बी टू पॉइंट एट ट्रिलियन गवर्नमेंट इज सिंग थ्री ट्रिलियन मैथोलॉजिकल एर एज ऑलवेज 
बट इफ गवर्नमेंट इज सेंग वी आर इंक्रीजिंग दैट ट्रेंड कैन नेवर बी रॉन्ग इफ यू आर इंक्रीजिंग यू आर इंक्रीजिंग इफ यू आर डिक्रीजिंग यू आर डिक्रीजिंग यू कैन डिस्प्यूट द क्वांटम ऑफ इंक्रीज एंड द क्वांटम ऑफ डिक्रीज यू कैन डिस्प्यूट दैट वी आर नॉट एट वन हंड्रेड एंड इलेवन हो सकता है वी मे बी एट नाइनटी ऑल्सो दे आर हंड्रेड परसेंट इट इज ट्रू बट वी आर डिक्लाइनिंग इन न्यूट्रीशन इट कैन नॉट बी रॉन्ग ट्रेंड्स आर नेवर रॉन्ग अंडरस्टैंड दिस एप्सलूट डेटा कुड बी रॉन्ग ठीक है प्लीज दैट कीप दैट इन माइंड लेट्स सी वट गवर्नमेंट इज गवर्नमेंट इज द थ्री आउट ऑफ फोर इंडिकेटर यूज इन द कैलकुलेशन ऑफ द इंडेक्स आर रिलेटेड टू हेल्थ ऑफ अ चिल्ड्रन कैन नॉट रिप्रेजेंट एंटायर पॉपुलेशन ठीक है ये बात तो सही है ये बात तो सही है ये बात पॉइंट गवर्नमेंट ने बिल्कुल सही बोली आउट ऑफ फोर पैरामीटर्स थ्री पैरामीटर चाइल्ड स्टडिंग चाइल्ड वेस्टिंग एंड चाइल्ड मोर्टैलिटी ऑफकोर्स दे आर फॉर चिल्ड्रन बट आई बिलीव चिल्ड्रन आर इंडिया हर हमेशा बोलते हैं ना दे आर द फ्यूचर ऑफ इंडिया सो ये आई वुड से दिस इज समथिंग यू आर पॉइंटिंग कॉल टेक्निकल एरर्स इससे सच्चाई नहीं छुपेगी इट डजेंट मैटर वट दे आर शेइंग वट मैटर इज वट दे आर सेंग इज ट्रू और नॉट चलिए फाइन आपका आर्ग्यूमेंट बिल्कुल सही है हंड्रेड परसेंट राइट आर्ग्यूमेंट नेक्स्ट फोर्थ एंड द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट इंडिकेटर प्रपोर्शन ऑफ अंडर न्यूट्रिशन पॉपुलेशन इज बेस्ड ऑन ओपिनियन पोल कंडक्टेड ऑन अ वेरी स्मॉल सैम्पल साइज ऑफ थ्री थाउजेंड सो दे आर सेंग थ्री इंडिकेटर्स बिलोंग्स टू चिल्ड्रन दैट इज नॉट फॉर द एंटायर पॉपुलेशन एंड फोर्थ इंडिकेटर इज बेस्ड ऑन अ वेरी स्मॉल सैम्पल सर्वे ऑफ थ्री थाउजेंड मैं फिर कह रहा हूँ देर कुड बी एरर्स इन कैलकुलेशन इवन बायसेस बट ट्रेंड इज रॉन्ग ये मैं नहीं कह सकता और ये कोई नहीं कह सकता ठीक है बिकॉज द सेम रिपोर्ट इज रेटिंग अदर कंट्रीज ऑल्सो ना ऐसा तो नहीं है कि दे हैव स्पेसिफिकली सिलेक्टेड इंडिया टू रिपोर्ट इसे बोलते हैं अपोलॉजिस्टिक एटीट्यूड एज इंदिरा गांधी यूज टू हैव इंदिरा गांधी यूज टू से दे आर दे आर कॉन्स्परेसी अगेंस्ट माई गवर्नमेंट फ्रॉम फॉरन सोर्सेज चलिए देखते हैं गवर्नमेंट पोर्शन ट्रेशर डेटा वट गवर्नमेंट डेटा से चाइल्ड वेस्टिंग हैज बीन कंसिस्टेंटली बिलो सेवन पॉइंट टू जबकि यहाँ पे बहुत ज्यादा दिखाई है दिस इंडिकेटर से चाइल्ड वेस्टिंग इन इंडिया इज अराउंड एटीन पॉइंट सेवन सॉरी चाइल्ड वेस्टिंग इसमें मेंशन कहा गया आई डोंट नो वेयर इट इज इसमें नहीं है शायद ये रहा चाइल्ड वेस्टिंग इज 18.7 परसेंट जबकि गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया डेटा सेज इट इज 7.2 पॉइंट टू मंथ ऑन मंथ बेसिस जबकि 18.7 पॉइंट सेवन परसेंट इज इन ग्लोबल हंगर इंडेक्स Child stunting and wasting are the outcome of complex interaction of various other factors like sanitation, genetics, environment, utilization of food intake apart from hunger. बिल्कुल सही बात है बिल्कुल सही बोला सरकार ने Absolutely correct. Yes, child wasting and child stunting happens from various reasons. बिल्कुल होता है Because of sanitation, because of genetics, because of environment, because of utilization of food intake. बहुत reasons होते हैं And we have discussed multiple times the biggest problem in India with respect to nutrition. is not that they do not have the food government is saying right and i told you earlier also the problem is not that they are not getting the food the problem is they are not getting the nutritious food theek hai first thing second thing is tropical entropathy the biggest problem in child nutrition in india is tropical entropathy it basically when a child get ill a lot when a child get ill a lot their intestine develops a habit or get scared of absorbing nutrition as out of for example if you are somebody you go somewhere some person slapped you next day you go to same place the same person again slapped you so what happens next time you will go prepare ki no slap should be there you will go prepare all counter measures will be there this is same thing is here when body get ill too much na our body start to react इट गेट फियरफुल ऑफ एब्जॉर्बिंग न्यूट्रीशन उसे डर लगता है कि इफ आई एब्जॉर्ब न्यूट्रीशन हो सकता है आई मे एब्जॉर्ब सम पैथोजन ऑल्सो एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दिस इट लेट्स ऑफ अ लॉट ऑफ न्यूट्रीशियस फूड फ्रॉम द बॉडी दिस इज द बिगेस्ट प्रॉब्लम तो बिल्कुल सही गवर्नमेंट सेट दैट सैनिटेशन जेनेटिक्स एनवायरमेंट एंड यूटिलाइजेशन ऑफ फूड इज अ प्रॉब्लम ऑफ हंगर बट हु विल डील विद दिस आप सही बोल रहे हैं कि दीज आर देर दीज आर बिकॉज ऑफ वेरियस रीजन बट डू नॉट डू दिस अननेसेसरी टारगेटिंग ना कह तो सही रहे हैं आप बट नंद लेस इट इज हैपनिंग ना चाइल्ड स्टेंटिंग इन वेस्टिंग इज हैपनिंग इन इंडिया वाई डोंट यू एक्ट ऑन सैनिटेशन जेनेटिक्स एनवायरमेंट रिप्लेशन ऑफ फूड यू आर यू हैव नेशनल फूड सिक्योरिटी एक्ट मोदी जी इज वेरी गुड इनिशिएटिव ऑफ स्वच्छ भारत आई पर्सनली लाइक दैट प्रोग्राम बट नंद लेस थिंग्स आर हैपनिंग नेक्स्ट इज 
देर इज हार्डली एविडेंस दैट चाइल्ड मोर्टैलिटी इज अ आउटकम ऑफ हंगर ये भी ठीक है अगेन आई एम सेइंग ऑल द आर्ग्यूमेंट मेड बाय गवर्नमेंट प्लीज रॉट लर्न दैम वेन यू आर राइटिंग एन आंसर इफ कम्स इन मीन्स प्लीज पुट दैम एज इट इज बट ऑल्सो पुट अ वन लाइन दैट दीज इंडिकेटर्स वट यू आर सेंग इज एब्सोल्युटली राइट बट ये कोई वजह नहीं होती जैसे फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू फेल्ड इन एन एग्जाम देन यू कम विद एक्सक्यूज अरे माई पेन स्टर डिड नॉट वर्क बट योर पेरेंट्स डिज नॉट लिसन ना योर पेरेंट्स केयर वेदर यू सक्सेस यू वर सक्सेसफुल और नॉट वेदर यू रोड द एग्जाम प्रॉपरली और नॉट यू वर्क हार्ड और नॉट दैट मैटर्स फोकस ऑन दैट लास्ट फूड सिक्योरिटी अकॉर्डिंग टू वर्ल्ड फूड समिट नाइनटीन फोर्टी नाइनटीन नाइनटी सिक्स फूड सिक्योरिटी एग्जिस्ट वेन ऑल पीपल एट ऑल द टाइम है फिजिकल सोशल एंड इकोनॉमिक एक्सेस टू सफिशियंट सेफ एंड न्यूट्रिशियस फूड so please remember this definition of food security india mein to basically there are three component of food security availability of food accessibility of to food and affordability of food what are the challenges we know the covid pandemic which has brought millions according to world food program 130 million people have come into food insecure the russian ukraine war now you can also add this uh, israel war it is also becoming a problem now The climate change is a problem. High population is a problem. So it's a comprehensive article. Do this, and you are done. Efforts, government of India has there are numerous efforts. Let's see the efforts. For example, in terms of production, India export only fifty billions of total agricultural export. So India's export is rising. Above that, we have National Food Security Act, very good and beautiful act. But there is a problem. This is not implemented very good. There are numerous CAG report highlighting that, in spite of having this 75 percent, 50 percent, which you have to remember by the way, India is not achieving very good implementation problem. That's why I always say we have good schemes, but India me implementation is a problem. Governance trap is a bigger problem in India. We have targeted PDS, very beautiful scheme of government of India since the time of I believe I don't know 1980s, 70s something. PM portion. Which was which used to be known as midday meal scheme, very very beautiful scheme. Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana again very good scheme. So government of India has good efforts, no doubt. National Food Security Act, targeted PDS, PM portion, PM uh, G K G K Y A N A Y, good schemes. But in spite of these schemes, things are not improving. Why? I hope you remember we discussed Purnima Menon's study that. a child nutrition survives on three factors a child nutrition survives on three factors government support nutrition and most important family income in india since demonetization utter stupid idea we have discussed demonetization and its fallout on indian economy multiple times okay it was a disastrous move so that move corona then comes corona Corona imposed lockdown, and then came Ukraine war. Now Israel, because of this, there have been large number of this decline of purchasing power among Indians, which has been highlighted by this uh, NSO report uh, recently also, which highlights that India may income has grown around seven point eight, but yet expenditure has grown by one point four. अब ये डिस्टेंस कैसे आया नहीं पता. We do not know very clearly because NSO report does not provide a clear reason for this, but still. Understand the problem that if family income declines, there are high chances the nutrition declines, and by blaming a foreign report you achieve nothing. If there is a foreign report, pick the parameters, work on those parameters, and I can give you an example. For example, World Bank is of doing business. When Modi government came to power, we used to be in one hundred something. By the last report, which was published in twenty nineteen, I believe, yeah, twenty eighteen. India was in 60s, so from 100 something when Modi government came to power to 60s. मतलब Modi government worked excessively on ways of doing business. So government can. There are two kind of government you have. One which give excuse, one which do the work. Let them publish whatever. We who cares about this? Let them publish. Work on your efforts. Work on the parameters. The way you worked on ways of doing business. A very good initiative. You work on ways of doing business brought India from 100s to 60. can you bring india good here you can focus hona chahiye bas chaliye anyway blaming others is very easy next multimodal ai 
so two news the upper two news are very 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 important second one is even more important because upsc is some favorite topics poverty hunger nutrition women these are very favorite topic of upsc they always ask on this next is multi model ai what is this multi model drama actually this is nothing a new form of ai that has emerged uh, multi model ai is an ai which can interact from text images and speech also means maan lete you have a ai system single ai which takes only one kind of input only one input multi model ai can take multiple inputs and can give the result or the outcome so there is a emergence because for example we have been using them for self driving car medical diagnosis education bahut jagah pe inka istemal ho raha hai some examples also for example meta projects care of karaoke google's video to text research open ai gpt 3.5 gpt 4 this can even take images to analyze and even have speech synthesis now you do not have to type you can even speak and the chat gdp will give you reply you have google gemini you have open ai gobi so there are different initiatives which highlights multi model ai ab indian context mein let's see Modi government and uh, Modi government is focusing on this also. They have India AI portal. This is a national AI portal of government of India, which is carrying out multiple studies on AI and all. Global partnership for artificial intelligence. India has joined this. So India is also working on AI. India AI portal launched. We have become partners of global partnership on artificial intelligence. We have launched national strategy for artificial intelligence. we have even launched national mission for interplanetary cyber physical systems cyber physical system means a interaction of real world and physical world a interaction of real world we have now now we have a system where you can interact for example you can have mechanical arm all you have to do is type something on computer and that arm behave the same way you will ask that arm to do something it will do but all you have to do is type on the computers or you can give voice commands also just alexa for example ठीक है तो दिस इज अ सिंथेसिस एलेक्स इज अ गुड एग्जांपल ऑफ साइबर फिजिकल सिस्टम अ सिंथेसिस ऑफ साइबर वर्ल्ड एंड फिजिकल वर्ल्ड अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस रिसर्च एनालिसिस तो गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एफर्ट्स आर देयर प्लीज रीड देम नाउ द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज इज एआई डेंजरस फॉर ह्यूमैनिटी देयर टू साइड्स वन से यस वन से नो लेट्स सी बोथ साइड्स बिकॉज़ प्योर इंटेलिजेंस विदाउट इमोशंस एंड सेंसिटिविटी प्योर इंटेलिजेंस विदाउट emotions and sensitivity where peoples and machines are bad for humanity yes stalin and hitler are good example hitler stalin these are intelligent creature with no emotions stalin killed millions of russians mao killed millions of chinese so does hitler killed millions of jews these all are mass murderers mao stalin chinese uh, hitler these are mass murderers okay these mass murderers basically they are clear example of intelligence without emotion or sensitivity so this is the problem with ai ai will be intelligent but it cannot feel emotions and then we are concerned whether this intelligence can do something bad it can chances are very high this is what stephen hawkins he was very uh, against ai and he said humanity has a problem we always find our end he said humanity is a problem we try to find our end and he believes that ai could be an existential threat to humanity because understand we have to sleep we have to sleep we have to uh, take in food ai ko aisa kuch nahi hoga if we can we are able to make a sentient ai a ai that can think on its own which we are trying i don't know why but we are trying <coughs> the chances are the achievement we had carried out in centuries the ai can take carry out within months <clears throat> something we carried out in centuries it will carry out within months because it does not have to sleep it can compute every second of its life and it will achieve greater heights than we can achieve theek hai so this is a problem but fine dekhte kya hota hai on the other hand we know technology improves quality of life humans can make ai inclusive for benefit of everyone whatever whatever ab there is a issue of employment yes there is a issue of employment with ai According to World Bank report, 69% of jobs in India are at the risk of being replaced by automation. So there are chances that 69% of jobs in India can be replaced by automation. A big concern, by the way. 
okay theek hai which is a common sense if ai will be there you will substitute labor and you will install a machine theek hai but kwan lee kwan lee wrote an article i want to you to understand this also a counter view of kwan lee he was a former national economic advisor to south korean government he wrote an article highlighting how come ai will not be a big danger let's see what is the argument he says there are two kind of things there are two kind of innovation in production what is known as product innovation second is known as process innovation what is this product innovation product innovation means when you bring a new and updated product when in the market you bring a new and updated product what that product does is it replaces old firms a new product will come into market it will of course replace old firms so it tends to create new demand and the associate job grows so when a new product come it replaces old firms it replaces products of old firms so people will get unemployed in old firms but new firm will bring new employment new types of employment also that will happen but also because he argued something called business stealing effect when you bring something new your competitor try to match you simply stating so when a new product will come it will lead to displacement of jobs but it will also create new demand and new jobs at the same time the companies who will lose business because of this new company will have a business stealing effect and they will also innovate so basically he is arguing in case of product innovation it is positive product innovation is positive a new innovative product replaces the old product the old companies try to compete with the new companies by becoming innovative so basically product innovation leads to upliftment of economy as a whole and over time he says that the net impact will be positive only next let us see process innovation process innovation means when you have a new method of production just a particularly you have ai so a new method of production it boost labor productivity obviously baat hai you have 10 workers now you require four workers and one machine so one machine could replace six workers this was the concern of gandhi also remember gandhi was never against modernization or mechanization he criticized modernity and he criticized mechanization for some negative aspects of it as such he did not uh, as such he did not worry about them but he thought that there are some uh, negative impacts of these things particularly with respect to automation or industrialization gandhi was of the opinion that i cannot withstand a soulless machine replacing a soulful human that was his logic theek hai so because of this you have this okay so what is process innovation a new method of production will boost labor productivity because now you require few workers to do the same amount of work so it will have a significant displacement effect so product innovation leads to positive effect process innovation leads to negative effect it displaces people particularly jobs but it also creates new kind of job because this new method of production will require new people but there is a problem तो ही मैं बताता हूं प्रॉब्लम क्या है बेसिकली ही सेस द प्रोसेस इनोवेशन विल बी समवेयर नेगेटिव व्हाई बिकॉज अंडरस्टैंड दिस एआई विल रिप्लेस जॉब्स बट एआई विल रिप्लेस मैकेनिकल जॉब्स मैनुअल जॉब्स नॉट इंटेलेक्चुअल जॉब्स फॉर एग्जांपल जॉब्स लाइक माइंड डॉक्टर्स इंजीनियर हु प्रोवाइड कंसल्टेशन सर्विसेस व्हाट आई एम डूइंग इज देखिए आई एम नॉट अ थ्रेट ऑफ लूजिंग जॉब फॉर एटलीस्ट मान लेते दिस सेंचुरी बिकॉज ए आई टू रीच टू द लेवल ऑफ माई इंटेलिजेंस वेर इट कैन टीच यू पी एस सी स्टूडेंट्स इट विल टेक एक्सेसिव टाइम ऑफ डेवलपमेंट और आई डोंट नो वेदर इट इज पॉसिबल और नॉट मे बी इन फ्यूचर सो आई मे नॉट बी इन द थ्रेट बट एट दन पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम वी आर लाइकली टू बी इन द थ्रेट वट वी हैव टू डू इज अपग्रेड आर सेल्फ फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू आर डूइंग अ मैकेनिकल वर्क देन यू हैव टू बी स्किल्ड in intellectual work ab this is the problem that not everyone can be skilled not everyone runs computer not everyone can understand computing so the problem with ai is it is likely to replace low skilled job 
एंड इट विल क्रिएट हाई स्किल्ड जॉब दैट्स वाई ए आई विल हैव अ प्रॉब्लम तो एस एस प्लीज रिमेंबर प्रोडक्ट इनोवेशन डज नॉट नेगेटिव प्रोडक्ट इनोवेशन इज पॉजिटिव बिकॉज यू ब्रिंग न्यू प्रोडक्ट इट ब्रिंग्स न्यू डिमांड एंड न्यू लेबर द रिमेनिंग प्रोडक्ट विच आर ओल्डर प्रोडक्ट इज रिप्लेस्ड एंड द ओल्डर फॉर्म इनोवेट सो इट्स पॉजिटिव ओवरऑल प्रोसेस इनोवेशन टू सम एक्सटेंड इज नेगेटिव बिकॉज अ न्यू प्रोसेस मीन्स यू रिक्वायर लेस लेबर सो मोर पीपल इज डिसप्लेस्ड बट द लेस लेबर यू रिक्वायर मस्ट बी हाईली स्किल्ड सो स्किल अपग्रेडेशन इज नेसेसरी सो द पीपल हु आर एट द थ्रेट ऑफ लूजिंग जॉब मस्ट अपग्रेड देयर स्किल्स and that is not feasible for everyone that's why overall he says if you combine the positive effect of product innovation and negative effect of process innovation he says that generative ai overall impact could be positive of course i believe it will be positive but it will be positive for the economy as a whole i believe it will be very negative for a large number of low skilled people unki to job gayi ठीक है तो अब करना पड़ेगा ऐसा कुछ ना कुछ ही इज गिवन एग्जाम्पल आप एक बार देख लेना कुछ खास नहीं है तो यूज ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी इंडिया में आई टोल्ड यू देर न्यूमरस एग्जाम्पल वाच अटल बिहारी वाजपेयी राजीव गांधी हु इम्पोर्टेड कंप्यूटर्स एंड नेहरू नेहरू यूज टू बिलीव इन मॉडर्न टेक्नोलॉजी ही इवन यूज टू से डैम्स आर द टेम्पल ऑफ मॉडर्न इंडिया ठीक है ये फर्क होता है वी सेट डैम्स आर द टेम्पल नेहरू सेट डैम्स आर द टेम्पल ऑफ मॉडर्न इंडिया ऑन द अदर हैंड यू हेड पाकिस्तान जहाँ पे यू हैव जुल्फिकर अली बुटो सेंग We will eat grass, but we'll develop nuclear weapon. So, eat and then you eat. Okay. Remember, leadership is very important. A leader who is visionary, a leader who talks about future, is the leader you should have. The past की बात करते हैं ना वो कभी आगे नहीं ले जाते. The people who always talk about past, जो आपको हमेशा आपका इतिहास बताते रहें कि what you did wrong in the past, they never take to future. Always we say, learn from the past and think about the future and talk about the future also. but some leaders who take you to the past they are not good they never favors you those people are just favoring themselves they never take you forward keep that in mind chaliye anyway so this is what i have to told you please uh, go through this once if there is an, any problem we can again revisit you know that next national framework for climate services what is this drama national framework climate services has been evolved in india by imd indian or indian meteorological department basically it is a strategic initiative to comprehensively comprehensive and integrated system for delivery climate services and information national framework climate services if i summarize it is nothing but imd is initiative to club a lot of environmental uh, information like a drought excessive heat wave these kind of information we will collect from various sources we will try to integrate them into whole so that we can provide them to the people simply stating समझ में आया टेकिंग इन्फॉर्मेशन फ्रॉम वेरियस कॉम्प्लेक्स सोर्सेज अबाउट क्लाइमेट चेंज एनवायरमेंटल चेंज दिस चेंज दैट चेंज पुट देम टुगेदर इंटीग्रेट देम एंड देन प्रोवाइड टू द पीपल सो दैट दे कैन यूज इट एज पर द नीड ठीक है दैट इज वट वी हैव ठीक है इससे यू कैन गेट टेलर्ड वेदर एंड क्लाइमेट इन्फॉर्मेशन यू कैन गेट इन साइट ऑन वेरियस यूजर ग्रुप एंड सेक्टर वो सारी चीजें हैं Baki, there is a global framework for climate services. Also, India is a member. Based on that, we are developing national framework for climate services. Necessity, man, I have told you. We need to know about what is happening. Farmers need to know. Business need to know. Okay, the rest is not there. Let's see. 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 Let Russia has ratified this treaty. What is this ratification drama? Understand, any treaty signed by a country at the world level must be ratified by the national parliaments. So, any treaty ratified at the world level must be uh, sorry. Any treaty signed at the world level must be ratified at the national level. Then only that becomes implementable. So, we see what is CTBT. Let's understand. It's a comprehensive test ban treaty. It was a significant international agreement aimed at prohibiting all nuclear explosion. Most important, all nuclear explosion. It aims to prohibit all nuclear explosion whatsoever. ठीक है, whether conducted for military or for peaceful purposes. The United Nations General Assembly endorsed and accepted it in 1996. 
However, despite the adoption, the TT has not been forced yet. So, 1996 में CTBT was adopted, which basically prohibits all nuclear explosion in all forms, whether military or peaceful. UNGA accepted this agreement in 1996, but it is not in force. Why? Because a large number of countries have not ratified this, including India. Let's understand the issue. It has a clause known as into the force clause. CTBT says India has accept नहीं कराए. India did not accept the CTBT since many countries were reluctant to eliminate their nuclear weapon on seeing India's rebuttal to the treaty. Initially, this treaty did not have any provision like this. But what happened? India said, "I will not sign CTBT, Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty, because this is not a denuclearization treaty. This treaty will not lead to elimination of nuclear weapons. It will only lead to preventing the modern new state becoming nuclear. The old countries which are nuclear will continue to be nuclear. And something India was like this apartheid, nuclear apartheid." I cannot tolerate. This nuclear apartheid, I cannot tolerate simply. So India did not accept CTBT since many countries were reluctant to eliminate. So they added the treaty. They added the treaty. They add a different provision because of India's assistance. The provision was entry into the force clause. It says. That this treaty will be implemented only when it will be ratified by all 44 nations, which are recognized by International Atomic Energy Agency as possessing nuclear weapon. So, entry into force clause. What does it say? It says this treaty will be forced only and only when all the 44 nations, which according to IAEA. Are possessing nuclear weapon or believed to possess nuclear weapon must sign this treaty. It basically means India is being pressurized. This clause का सिर्फ एक ही aim था. To this clause had only one aim was to pressurize India to sign the treaty. Fine, करते रहो pressurize who cares? So India condemned this action. India condemned this move. Said that it is against. Vienna Convention on Law of Treaties. What is Vienna Convention on Law of Treaties? Vienna Convention on Law of Treaties says that any international treaty shall be. Uh, it provides comprehensive operational guidelines, rules, and procedure on how treaty should be drafted. And Vienna Convention on Law of Treaties, it is also known as Law of Laws, basically. It is Vienna Convention on Law of Treaties, also known as Law of Laws or Treaty of Treaties. It says any international treaty must be voluntary on nations. It should not force them to adopt something. So India says, "Aap isse violate kar rahe hain." Or also, by having this drama of 44 nations signing this treaty, you are pressurizing me particularly. I will not sign this treaty because this treaty does not achieve denuclearization. This treaty is only achieving or trying to prohibit new countries from getting nuclear weapon. चलिए next देखते हैं ratification status. I told you it will be legally binding once all 44 state which are in annex two of the treaty means the state identified by the IAEA to possess nuclear weapon if they ratify this treaty. The non-signatory of the TTR, India, Pakistan, Bhutan, and other countries. These are primarily remember, particularly remember India, Pakistan. The countries which have signed the TT but not ratified in their national parliament is China, USA, Israel, Iran, Sri Lanka, Nepal, and other countries. One sixty-six countries, including Russia, has signed and ratified the TT. Now so Russia is trying to de-ratify the TT. ठीक भी है सुनने में ठीक भी लग रहा है देखते क्या होता है नेक्स्ट ऑरिजिन एंड रिवोल्यूशन है मैंने आपको समझा ही दिया था लेट मी गिव अ समरी फॉर यू ताकि आई नो इट्स अ लॉन्ग क्लास सो अंडरस्टैंड द समरी हियर सी टी बी टी वॉज इनेक्टेड बिकॉज बिफोर दिस यू हैड पी टी बी टी पार्शियल टेस्ट बैंड ट्री टी इंडिया हैज साइन दैट पी टी बी टी पी टी बी टी से यू कैन नॉट कंडक्ट न्यूक्लियर टेस्ट एनी वेयर एक्सेप्ट अंडरग्राउंड 
अब इंडिया ने साइन द टी टी इंडिया ओके फाइन अब वाई बिकॉज अंडरस्टैंड न्यूक्लियर रिएक्शन हैज अ प्रॉब्लम इफ देर आर टू मेनी एक्सप्लोजन देर आर चांसेज इट मे हैव चेन रिएक्शन अ न्यूक्लियर एक्सप्लोजन कैन आयनाइज द एयर and because of this there could be chain reaction and this can burn entire earth also chances hai matlab not feasible but chances bhi hai so keeping that in mind we thought it is not safe to have a uh, atmospheric explosion so we put a provision that explosion can take place only underground not outside this is called ptbt india signed that ctbt me india argues first it is discriminatory because it it pressurizes uh it does not pressurizes existing country from giving up their nuclear weapon it only pressurizes new countries from gaining nuclear weapon first point second point india says that the advanced countries have developed nuclear uh, have developed computer capabilities the advanced countries of the world they have developed computer capabilities and they can carry out artificial simulation on computer they no longer require any physical testing so india says we can we do not have that to hum nahi karenge so these are the two main, most important principal opposition of india to ctpt that's why india has not signed this so this treaty is in limbo let's see what happens to aise hi chal raha hai baki aap ek baar dekh lena there is nothing much apart from this some other treaties are very important please remember them india's opposition i told you it is written here Recently, a new treaty has come, which is even universal. Nobody has signed this Convention on Prohibition of Nuclear Weapon. Because India was saying, na, it is nuclear apartheid, that theid, that dot theid. So we have brought a new treaty known as Convention on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapon. It prohibits full range of nuclear weapon related activity. This treaty prohibits everything from testing, from developing, from acquiring. Everything is banned, and none of the nine countries like. USA, Russia, Britain, China, France, India, Pakistan, North Korea, Israel. They neither participated in negotiations nor they have signed the treaty. Hypocrisy, I told you, no. It runs with everyone, and I have always told you hypocrisy is the norm of politics and particularly international politics. So these countries who find any reason to not sign treaties, इसलिए मैंने हमेशा बोला है that this wars, this aggression, uh, this border disputes. this all are big people sitting in big chambers concocting ideas for common people to die usse to kuch nahi hai common people do not want this dramas they do not want wars they do not want this drama they just want a decent living some standard uh, some uh, leisure time some time with friends some time with family that, that's it itne bahut bade dreams nahi hai kisi ke nobody wants to capture the world theek hai except for politicians that to this big leaders That is exactly happening here. अगर आपको इतना ही था that the NPT, non-proliferation treaty, CTBT, FMCT, these treaty are apartheid, these treaty is that, this treaty is that. तो इसे क्यों नहीं साइन किया? कर देते इसे. I'm talking about all these countries, US, Russia, Britain, China, France, India, Pakistan, North Korea, Israel. क्यों नहीं साइन करा इसे? It's a comprehensive treaty. It bans everything from testing to acquiring nuclear weapon for everyone. whether you have nuclear weapon whether you don't have nuclear weapon all are banned why you are not banned signing this now ab unka dekh lete even japan sochiye japan a country which suffered from nuclear weapon attack usne bhi sign nahi kiya aise dikkat hypocrisy i told you na all nations are hypocrite let's see why they are opposing ab unke bhangar argument dekh lete hain let's see their bhangar arguments nuclear power argue that their arsenal serves as deterrence and they say they are committed to non proliferation treaty matlab kuch bhi they say a nuclear powered country excluding india they say that they are committed to uh, they are committed to npt because npt does not prohibit nuclear powered countries from giving up nuclear weapon npt prohibits only new countries from acquiring nuclear weapon isliye they are committed to npt second thing their arsenal serves as deterrence they say a blanket ban on nuclear weapon does not address security concerns which make nuclear weapon necessary matlab wo keh rahe hain jis din this entire world will become a pacifist country this entire world will be run by people like gandhi us din wo sign karenge matlab fictional scenario jo hona nahi hai kabhi so understand this nuclear weapon will never be abolished until less we have some alien invasion 
ठीक है तो वी मे ट्राई दो न्यूक्लियर वेपन अगेंस्ट दैम और सम बिग डिजास्टर हैपन्स वरना मुझे लगता नहीं इनको अकल आएगी दे नीड वर्ल्ड वॉर थ्री तब उन्हें शायद अकल आ जाए बिकॉज देखिए ह्यूमैनिटी को वर्ल्ड वॉर वन हैपन देन वी क्रिएटेड लीग ऑफ नेशन देन वर्ल्ड वॉर टू हैपन देन वी क्रिएटेड अ बेटर वर्जन ऑफ लीग ऑफ नेशन नोन एज यूनाइटेड नेशन इट हैज सम वीकनेसेस दे आर वेटिंग फॉर वर्ल्ड वॉर थ्री देन दे विल मेक अ न्यू बॉडी विच विल बी बेटर तो ह्यूमैनिटी एज अ प्रॉब्लम जब तक कोई कांड नहीं हो जाता तब तक कोई कुछ नहीं करना चाहता बहाने बनाना चाहते हैं चलिए एनी वे देखते हैं क्या होता है इंडिया स्टैंड इंडिया एज स्टैंड इज इट इज नॉट अ कॉम्प्रीहेंसिव इंस्ट्रूमेंट क्यों बिकॉज इट डज नॉट हैव वेरिफिकेशन प्रोसेस राधा इंडिया कंसिडर जिनीवा बेस्ड कॉन्फ्रेंस एंड डिसमेंट एज द सिंगल मल्टीलेटल फोरम ठीक है इंडिया का भी बहाना मस्त है अंडरस्टैंड दिस ऑल कंट्रीज आर गिविंग जस्ट एक्सक्यूज दे डोंट वॉन्ट टू साइन दिस ट्रीटी बिकॉज दे फील इफ आई साइन द ट्रीटी एंड आई ओबेड वट अबाउट अदर कंट्रीज फॉर एग्जाम्पल इंडिया साइन द ट्रीटी इंडिया गिव अप न्यूक्लियर वेपन बिकॉज वी आर अ लैंड ऑफ गांधी वट अबाउट पाकिस्तान चाइना लैंड एंड दे डोंट साइन द ट्रीटी वी साइन द ट्रीटी तो हम फंस जाएंगे और ये सब सोच रहे हैं द रियल रीजन इज दिस एवरी कंट्री इज थिंकिंग इफ वी साइन द ट्रीटी वी गिव अप न्यूक्लियर वेपन देन वट अबाउट द अवर एनिमी बट इफ दे डोंट गिव अप न्यूक्लियर वेपन तो क्या होगा फिर तो अंडरस्टैंड द इनसिक्योरिटी दीज कंट्रीज आर इनसिक्योर कंट्रीज द इनसिक्योरिटी अमंग दैम समथिंग वी स्टडी इन पोलिटिकल साइंस एज बिजनेस इसे हम बोलते हैं बिजनेस डिलेमा दिस इज अ थेरी इन पोलिटिकल साइंस नोन एज बिजनेस डिलेमा बिजनेस डिलेमा इज अचुएशन वे द कंट्रीज आर लाइक अ प्रिजनर दे वॉन्ट टू डू द गुड थिंग बट दे आर प्रिजनर ऑफ द पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ बैड थिंग्स दैट दे नेवर डू द गुड थिंग Now, for example, uh, the example is the dilemma is how many people die in India because of nuclear weapons? Sorry, because of terrorism or because of nuclear weapon? Nuclear weapons have never been used. Neither India nor Pakistan nor China. No one has used nuclear weapons. But still, we invest millions of rupees in nuclear weapons in a country which is high poverty. Abhi thode pehle hunger report gayi thi na? Hunger report me we are at 111, but we want to keep nuclear weapons. Why? because we are in a business dilemma we are in a dilemma that if we give up nuclear weapon pakistan does not give up or china does not give up what will happen then so this dilemma ke chakkar mein we are wasting money on something we will never use anyway this is the problem real problem is this nobody says this but this is the real problem the world need i don't know what the world need i am not a world guru here theek hai chali anyway to nuclear weapon will never end ye mujhse likhwa lijiye until less there is a world war 3 tab ho sakta hai otherwise ye country sudharne wale nahi hai koi se bhi chaliye what is missing in the tt practical application wagaira aap pad lena kuch khas nahi hai let's see how we can do this so a suggestion has been given by ramesh thakur ramesh thakur has suggested how we can achieve denuclearization of the world some suggestions are first delegitimize first you have to delegitimize possession of nuclear weapon then prohibit delegitimize means go around the world make a sentiment develop common value that any country which possess nuclear weapon is a bad country defame any country possessing nuclear weapon isse kya hoga over time having nuclear weapon will become a stigma that is for example it happens uh, for example india mein if you have bhang in your pocket it is like oh bhole ka prasad but if you have ganja in your pocket you are like oh my god drugs both are hallucinating compounds but possessing of one is like devotion possessing of another is like crime why understand i always say everything depends upon morality what the society consider just or unjust that decide the same event as criminal or not there are some some countries uh, allows even marijuana in some countries mein if you smoke marijuana it's legal i think canada mein some amount mein it is legal i don't know so it is legal india mein it is illegal so if you're smoking a marijuana in uh, some country you are like oh fine it's very good if you're smoking that in india it's a crime if you are having bhang which is which is a hallucinating compound chalega because it is linked to religious customs in india same you can go to any country there there are so many things which may or may not harm which may harm but which may or may not be criminal depending upon which country you are the okay, same thing he says delegitimize even possession of nuclear weapon should be ridiculed around the world then prohibit nuclear weapon that nobody will develop nuclear weapon 
then cap who have the nuclear weapon will reduce the nuclear weapon and last eliminate so these are the five stages he has given which can be followed in this this five part agenda in this the three part two part sorry delegitimization and prohibition it can be done by international community these three part capping means you will not produce more nuclear weapon reduce means you will start reducing them slowly last may eliminate this will be done by nuclear powers so this is a suggestion uh, basically we have and this was the last news i have for you chale fine i have been speaking for more than one and a half hour i hope you got something out of this class these notes have been given to you and a bit sorry theek hai class got delayed you know murphy's law if something has to go bad it will go bad humans have no control over it some environmental scenario were like this chaliye koi nahi so we will continue our class regularly at 9 to 11 this class had some anomaly so forgive me for that i hope you like it bye bye then we will meet again in the next current affairs class next saturday 9 to 10:30 i believe it is okay bye bye